What's up, YouTube Universe? Eric here. I'm joined with Jeff, as always, and we're here to make our week four predictions. Uh, what is your record thus far? Uh, I got gotcha. you. Got gotcha. you. <laughs> got gotcha, you, bitch. Uh, pulled a little maneuver and called some of the uh, some of the upsets. Didn't call them all. But I was 10 and 6 last week. You were 8 and 8. Uh, that puts me at uh, 33 and 15. And you are 32 and 16. Okay, neck and neck like a mug. <clears throat> All right, so let's go ahead and uh, call the games for this week. Starting off Thursday night football, San Francisco 49ers taking on St. Louis and uh, merry old England. <laughs> well, that that's not in England. It's the Minnesota. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right, you're right. You're right. My bad. My bad. That game's in St. There Louis. is a there is a game in merry old England though. <laughs> there Fish is. Fish chips. <laughs> Cup of tea. <laughs> Crumpets. Bad bad food, worse weather. It's a crump pop. Very fucking poppins in London. <laughs> but uh, the San Francisco 49ers heading to St. Louis to take on the Rams. What are your thoughts on that game? I don't think this week is going to hold as many surprises as last week did. I kind of saw some of that stuff coming just because week three, I don't know, I just saw, and I, I almost actually picked the Cleveland uh, game, and I would have picked that game had they not done some stupid Trent Richardson trade it's turned me off they ended up winning that game wow <laughs> um but i don't think this week is going to have as many uh upsets i certainly uh I, I didn't see some of those coming uh, but some of them i saw coming but is st louis beating the niners really an upset anymore uh, it, it certainly <clears throat> it, you wouldn't think you know the, the last two seasons uh, i think st louis has the edge mm -hmm. they tied them and beat them last year and this year you, you gotta you gotta say what's going on with with San Francisco. I mean, they are in turmoil. Odds on favorite to uh, go back to the Super Bowl. Powerhouse team, well coached, lots of talent. Blew out the Green Bay Packers in Week One. Wanted to get into a dogfight with Seattle and got their ass whooped. Badly, I was at that two. game. That was a fun game to be at. And and and. It's a it, they're a veteran team. I don't. I just don't understand how that had any lingering effects. You, you, you let Indianapolis come in at home <laughs> and trounce you, and I I I don't get it. What's going on with the offense? What's going on with the defense? I mean, um, they're they're now one of the worst teams in the league at stopping the run. And the last two years, I think one year, two years ago. They didn't allow a rushing touchdown till the last game of the season, which is incredible. Yeah, that is. That is. And they were very tough against the run. Everybody says you don't start running backs against Ever. Uh, San Francisco. And now all of a sudden, apparently you can. Um, I'm not really worried about uh, the Rams running game. I'm not. Uh, Daryl Richardson's banged up. Isaiah Pete is a head case. Um. Bradford's been playing well, but Dallas shut him down. I think San Francisco is just going to return to form here. I, I I don't see much happening here other than San Francisco. I, I If I thought they were pissed last week, and I thought they were pissed last week, they're really pissed now, and I mean for <laughs> real. I mean, like, I'm for real pissed now. Um, I'm done fucking around. It's like, <laughs> I'm for real pissed. And I think they are for real pissed. I don't think it matters where this game is. Um, I... I I've got to think that it's we're done. We're 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 done fucking around. Enough's enough. Uh, and San Francisco takes this game kind of similar to what Dallas did. Um, I'm actually going to disagree with you and <clears throat> go with the St. Louis Rams. And the reason behind that is you can give it home field advantage. But uh, I think the Niners have been exposed because of injuries. Um, they're facing some injuries on their defensive front now. Alden Smith's getting a DUI on his way into work. Yeah, what in yeah, the world? It's not really an injury, but it's uh, it, it's self-inflicted wounds. He ain't playing. Yeah, he's not playing. Patrick Willis is banged up. He's the beating heart of that defense. Offensive, uh, you got Frank Gore, who was absolutely destroying the first half of last week, and they stopped handing them the ball. So... That's just a poor coaching decision. So I think if you're gonna if you're gonna go coach to coach, I, I'm gonna hitch my wagon to Jeff Fisher. Yeah, well, he, and he certainly knows how to get the job done against the 49ers. I'm I'm gonna go with the St. Louis Rams in this in this game. It's gonna be a close one. Probably gonna be low scoring. 
because two good defenses, but I'm going to give it to the Rams. I, I think they're going to win this I, game. I'm going to take San Francisco, and I'm going to say, I'm going to say this game's going to be 35 to like 14. Okay, so you're just leaning towards more of a high scoring. Yeah, I am. Affair. I mean, if Dallas okay. put Dallas put 31 on on San or on on the Rams, and I think. San Francisco can do the same. I think Dallas has more offensive talent. Well, they do. I, the I would Rams. agree with you there, but <laughs> I, I think Kaepernick <clears throat> is going to come out of his shell and out of his fucking skull. I just, think Kaepernick is all they have at this point. Because if you're not going to hand the ball to Frank Gore, might be if enough. you're not going to hand the ball to well, Frank Gore, well, they're going to have to. Because w- what was the key to Dallas doing what they did? It was Demarco Murray running for 175 yards. Yeah. And but what if they don't do that? If that's they, that's maybe, my fear. You know if. If they don't, then then I, I don't understand. I mean, if pundits like you and me can see that that's what they need to do, <laughs> how can the offensive coordinator of a professional football team that they're paying, you know, seven hundred, eight hundred, a million dollars to a year, how can he not see that? Uh, I, I mean, they're looking didn't. at the tape. What broke down the Rams last week was Dallas's rush and getting to the passer, and San Francisco can do that. They just have to go get it done, and I, I, I just think it's time. I mean, I can't, I can't keep these guys in a fucking medicine cabinet forever. <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna split on that game. You're taking the Niners. I'm taking the Rams. Uh, next game up is Baltimore Ravens heading to Buffalo, New York, to take on the Bills. Curious. Um, Ravens look like shit against Denver, and 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 now we're seeing that everybody looks like everybody shit looks against everybody Denver. looks like shit against Denver. <laughs> Denver appears to be unstoppable. Uh, and then, um, <clears throat> you know, they do last week to Houston, and maybe they just got Houston's number. You know, maybe because Ray Lewis, Ray Lewis has an effect on that team. It's almost like the Tooth Fairy. <laughs> he's in the building, and for some reason, but he's not in the building this week, right? They're not retiring his number in Buffalo. Ray Lewis isn't going to be there. Um, I'm curious what's going to happen here. I'm really curious if are they are they for real? It, it, who are the Ravens? Are they going to be the team that we saw the first two weeks? Are they going to be the team that we saw last week? I think I think they're going to be very for real this week. I, I'm giving that game to Baltimore, and I think they're going to win. Handily, you think you're gonna. You, you think they're gonna stuff Buffalo? I do, because because you got a rookie quarterback. Granted, he's shown some flashes, but if they can figure out how to shut the running game down, which they've proven they can do, then what does Buffalo have? Well, you know, Buffalo beat the Panthers, and the Panthers put it on the Giants, like it hasn't been put on the Giants since 1948. Um. The God, Panthers God, the held are terrible. the Seahawks <laughs> to 14 points. Um, the Panthers have got a good defense, and Did Buffalo you? put it on them. And I don't, I don't think that the Ravens are real. And so for that reason, I'm going with Buffalo. Okay. So. I don't think the Ravens are real. I think that we're going to see the Ravens return to what last week you and I both said they're not a good team, and then all of a sudden they do this to the Texans, and I think that was more just the Texans. Um, being stupid. Um, the Texans actually uh, out, they had more yardage uh, in, through the air than the Ravens did last week, and they had more yards on the ground. It came to, it came to you know, mistakes. I, I'm not sure Buffalo doesn't make mistakes, but oh, I don't think mistakes. you get lucky two weeks in a row. And so I think, like I said last week, Cleveland, they barely beat Cleveland. And Cleveland held them to zero points for three quarters of a game. And that, that just tells me that you're you're not that good. And I'm, I'm hoping Jarius Bird will be back this week. But I think Buffalo's defense, they get, they get after the quarterback. I think Flacco doesn't have enough help. I think Rice isn't healthy, although they're probably going to start him. He's not healthy. That's probably egos talking. I think Buffalo is going to pull this out. It's going to be a close game. I think it's going to be, you know, 27 28, that kind of game. Okay. But I think okay. Buffalo is going to pull it out. I, I think, uh, I think the key to Baltimore winning this game is going to be their defensive play. They can continue to do or play off what they did last week. And, and Torrey Smith, I, I hate to lay a game I just on don't one think player. That, I don't think they have a defense. I think they have a defense when Ray Lewis 
is in their fucking huddle at the beginning of the game to get them pumped up. I don't think they can do it. I don't think they can. <laughs> that That's what got them to the Super Bowl, right? Because he said, this is my last ride. And for some reason, they respond to that guy. They re- they but rally. he's not traveling to Buffalo. And I just, I don't think they're a self-starting team. I just don't. Like I was saying, I I, I don't like to, to lay a game on one player. But I really think Torrey Smith, of all the players on that team, I really think Torrey Smith is going to be the key player to their victory in this game. Because I think that his speed, because he's one of the fastest players in the NFL. If period. Jarris Bird comes back this week, Torrey Smith will be invisible. Mm, I don't think so. I don't think so. The guy's just so fast, and Flacco has a bazooka for an arm. Say what you want about his, his accuracy or $120 million. If he could throw the ball 60, 65 yards down the field, which he's capable of, he's shown that, I think Torrey Smith is going to peel the lead, peel the lid off that defense, and I, I think they're going to be able to beat him with the vertical passing game. Could, that, that could be. It very well could be. I just I, I hope Jarius Bird gets his head out of his ass and decides to play. He's in the contract year. He wants to be out of Buffalo. Not sure why. It's a promising team. And uh, Mario Williams is you he's know, getting, playing. He's balling. He's getting after it. So Four we'll and see. a half sacks last week. Yeah, we'll split on that one. Okay, so we split on that one. I'm taking Baltimore. You're taking Buffalo. Next game is Cincinnati traveling to the doghouse. Cleveland. Yeah. Um, I'm all romance in Cincinnati's defense. <laughs> well, Cleveland's all defense over these is, guys. Cleveland's defense is no joke either. Look, I was all over Cincinnati last week uh, going up against the big bad. Um, they embarrassed uh, Aaron Rodgers. He was ineffective. Sort of the Niners. Um, he was ineffective. He had uh, well, like nine points in fantasy through like three – I think he only scored 12. I mean, when you can stymie a, a, an offense as potent as the as the Packers have, um, it, you've got something. And I think Geno Smith and and, and uh, Kiko, whatever his name is, um, those guys are getting after it. It's a hell of a defense. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't see Brian Hoyer – he went up against uh, a decent defense in in Minneapolis, but he didn't go up against one of the best defenses in the NFL, and that's what I think is going on right there in Cincinnati. You've got a defense that that can trounce the Steelers. You've got a defense that can trounce, you know, good teams. Yeah, I, and uh, I I just think Cincinnati's way too much. And I I I, I AJ Green. And versus Joe Hayden, I take AJ Green. This guy goes well, up and yeah, gets the, everything. That guy, that guy is, that guy's just one of those players, one of those special players that is almost undefendable. Um, but I'm going to agree with you that Cincinnati's defense, coupled with their offense, because their offense, their their running game is on point, where they were lacking last year. Cincinnati's or uh, Cleveland's rather, excuse me, Cleveland's running game is now. Who's running the ball? You traded away Trent Richardson. You're starting Brandon Hoyer again. Who, I mean, Brandon Hoyer, Brandon Whedon, to me, flip a coin. They're the same person as far as a quarterback goes. Josh Gordon, yeah, he came back healthy last week. Defense obviously didn't yeah, account see, for him. Yeah, but that's Minnesota. Minnesota loves to give up lots of friggin' yards to wide receivers. They, they, they like to give up holes and stuff, and so – Josh Gordon had a good game. You know, he, there was a couple passes over the top. Yeah. You, I, I don't think you do that to Cincinnati. I, I don't, don't think, think you do that at I all. I don't think Cincinnati's going to allow that to happen again. So I'm going to agree with you and take Cincinnati in this game. They're they're just too good defensively. I'm just thinking 24 to 3. I think Cleveland might score a they might score a field goal. Yeah, I don't I don't know that it's going to be that kind of ass whooping, but I'm I'm <laughs> I'm going to give the edge to to Cincinnati the the Bengals in this one as well. Uh, next game up is a divisional matchup. Ooh. Chicago heading to Detroit. Boy, you know, <laughs> I like Detroit. I'm a, you know, I I've been a fan of Detroit just because they they suck. They you know they won two games and they they went zero and sixteen. 
Then they picked up Matt Stafford, right? They went 0-16. Yeah, that, that was their biggest issue. Some seasons ago. Remember such that, do you just, remember that season when they started off 6-0? and Yeah, John and Kitna was their quarterback. Right, and didn't win another game after that. They, yeah. they went 10-16. and I'm, like, I'm thinking, what in the hell? That just showed their instability <coughs> at quarterback. Matt, Matt Stafford is a good quality NFL starter. He, and he's got arguably the best receiver in the entire league in Calvin Johnson. Without a doubt. I mean, it's not even arguably. He is the best receiver. And, and maybe when he's done, he'll be the best receiver to ever play the game. It's possible. And um, how many how many touchdowns has this kid had robbed from him? You know, if I'm this guy, <laughs> if I'm this guy, I'm just not even diving for anything near the end zone because – Week one, he had yeah, I mean, two touchdowns. They, they, two touchdowns called back on him. You know, they they changed the rules around this guy, and he, and he still can't he still can't uh, conform or whatever um, through the catch. <laughs> you know, like last year we had the the zero in on Des Bryant, his finger touching the white line. I mean, yeah. they just zoom in and and you can see Des Bryant's pinky finger touching. The white line, and they call yeah. it back. Well, HD screwed receivers out of a lot of touchdowns. Exactly. Because, you, I mean, really, I mean, part of his finger touched the white line, you know, on a play that they had already called a touchdown. So it's really hard. We're under the microscope every, you know, on every touchdown now because they review every play. And, you know, that that RG3 touchdown, Everybody call it a touchdown. I remember, you know, I told you, I said, I think that ball hit the ground. They're going to call it back. Mm-hmm. We're, you know, watching yeah, that was that red big zone. One. That was like a 60 yeah, yard touchdown. Yeah, it was, he, he threw it like 70 yards. Uh, but I, I mean, I just saw the ball jiggle around and I thought, as soon as they replay this, that's going to be, back. that's going to be called back. And that's a shame, really, because that's a great, that was a great pass, a great catch. Um, and they call it back. That could have been the difference in that game. But, we're under instant replay, so you've got to be perfect now. Mm-hmm. Now you've got to be perfect when it comes to getting in the end zone and holding on to the ball. And did did, did you get both of your feet in, or you know, a knee is two feet? And and um, we, I hate Chicago. I'm just going to tell you that right now. <laughs> hate. I hate Chicago. I hate uh, Cutler. Don't like him. Don't like him. Um. Brandon Marshall's a beast. Uh, yep. On the other side of the ball, and Brandon everybody's Marshall been saying, is. you know, that you, you got to break up this couple. You know, it can't be just pitch and catch to Brandon Marshall. And but, now you, all sudden, but you can't. You can't. Defensively, you cannot. Brandon Marshall and Calvin Johnson on the other side of the ball, they draw double teams every week. Everybody yeah. knows who these guys are, what they're capable now of. Now you got Earl Bennett and, and Martellus Bennett coming out of nowhere, making circus catches that don't even count. Yeah, his I mean, third team in his fourth year in the league. Yeah. And uh, and he started off with Dallas, and he was promising, but he kept dropping the ball, and he was missing coverage and couldn't pick up the scheme. He wasn't smart enough. Um, but he's catching on in Chicago. So, I I think I think the big difference with Chicago's offense this year, the the night and day difference in their success, is the fact that Jay Cutler has been upright. Yeah, he's they, been one of the most sacked quarterbacks in the NFL every year he's been in Chicago, and this year. He, they've kept him upright, you know, and when you is, keep a guy like Jay Cutler upright, match. he's like gonna he, he's gonna pick you apart. You always say, throw records out the window. Nah. It's a divisional dogfight. I hate Chicago. I you know I'm leaning toward picking them, but you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna change it up. I'm gonna go with Detroit. I'm gonna take Detroit. They're at home, and I just think Chicago is due for a letdown, uh, and. I just think Matt's going to be on his game. Stafford's going to be on his game. Yeah, I know uh, Nate Burleson broke his arm. Um, just coincidentally, he was he broke his arm in a car accident where he was trying to stop a pizza from sliding off <laughs> the seat. So, it, you know, let's at least think he about wasn't. It. At least he wasn't drunk. Nope, not alcohol <laughs> wasn't a factor, but a pizza was a factor. And let's just think pizza. about this for a second. You sacrifice your body let's for pizza. Let's not take our time. eyes off the road to catch a pizza. I mean, let's just <laughs> not do that. I don't know. It depends on where the pizza came from. Well, I don't know where. I mean, you know. Uh, my opinion, you always sacrifice your body for a pizza. Yeah, but you know what? <laughs> there could have been a kid in the way or something. I mean, I, you, you just let the pizza hit the whatever. I mean, it's still going to be a pizza when you get it at home. You might you might have to fold it over or something, but it's Make still it going to be a pizza. I mean... <laughs> 
It, it, the worst case, it's going to be a Pizza Hut pizza, right? When everything's stuck to the fucking lid. <laughs> um, well, I, I think I think the big difference in this game is going to be Chicago's defense because they are forcing turnovers. Like I just keep game saying busters. year after year, year after year. I keep saying they can't keep doing this, and they keep doing and this. They do. They do. They keep doing this, and I hate them for keeping doing this. <laughs> and and so I'm hoping they won't keep doing this. Uh, although I picked up uh, Major Wright yeah. um, on my fantasy team, I'm just, I'm just gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take Detroit just because I want to. Well, it it pains me to say this because Matt Stafford is my fantasy quarterback, but I think he's gonna have a long day because I think Chicago's defense is for real. I think they're gonna cause some turnovers. Yes, Reggie Bush is coming back, but is he a hundred percent? You don't know. Joyke Bell's been doing great things there in Reggie Bush's absence, but I, I, Detroit is so quick to abandon the run. I think that um, Chicago is going to win this game. I do. There you have it. <laughs> Next game up is Seattle traveling to Houston. Holy defense, Batman! Wow. I mean, well, <laughs> I mean. Where was Houston last week? I mean, it, this team is, it, it stymies me. They, they they have talent everywhere. J.J. Watt. Maybe, you know, maybe Houston's kind of like Seattle. Um, big defense at home. Um, and, you know, Seattle's proven that they don't play well on the road. They, they barely were, beat they, the Panthers. They, they were 3-8 and eight last year um, on the road. Uh, perfect at home. It's great if you're perfect at home. That's... That's eight wins. Eight wins, yep. And if you win three on the road, you've won 11 games. You've done great. Um, which which kind of tells me that, you know, they barely, like like we said, they barely beat a Panthers team in week one. And it was like 14 to 12. Um, blew out the 49ers, so everybody's going, oh, you know, Seattle's the number one on all the power rankings. They're the number one team. You can't beat Seattle. I think the only team that could beat Seattle at home is is Denver. Well, at home, yes, but we're not at home. We're we're in, in deep in Houston. the heart of Texas, and you know we're way down south. Um, and I think this team might be reading their own press. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe that's what happens when they go on their own. Um, they're formidable at home, and 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 they get up for that. But I think there's this letdown. Um, I think they come down to earth and they become a normal team, you know, with a defense. And Texas just got embarrassed, you know, by the Ravens again, right? The yeah. Ravens beat them in the, They're beat them in the playoffs leads. last they, year. And, they they I mean, take these huge leads and they blow it. And I don't see that happening again. I, I, I think, I, you know, I don't think it's going to be a, I don't think it's going to be this. A uh, huge lead blown. I, I think it's going to be a back and forth game. Um, Russell Wilson's going to have to start playing better because I'm telling you what. Last week he had a good game, but he didn't this have. This was a against the Jaguars, and he still didn't have that good. Of he a game. had a ton. He didn't have a ton of yards. He had like, I think he had less than 200 yards. 229. Passing. Yeah, he he barely had any yards passing, but he did have four touchdowns, and they yanked him in like the fourth quarter. Yeah, but this is the Jaguars, and and and. You know, I feel bad for the Jags. They, Hang in there, they, Jag fans. Bag, Good things you know. are coming. Yeah, and 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 the thing that is is here's the thing, Jaguar fans. You know how Seattle got good because they were that bad for three, four years. They were like the worst team in the AFC. Yep. West. They they won two games one year, three games one year. That's how you get good. That's what. That's why it's parity because you get high draft choices. Mm -hmm. Kansas City Chiefs won two games last year. You know, the year before that, they won four games. Um, they had a ton of picks, and they picked well and did good with those. Scott Pioli, shout out to you. <laughs> um, you know, Justin Houston. And, and He was a third-round draft pick. Yeah. I mean, Unbelievable. You know, some of these guys, Dwayne Bowe and, and, and those guys. Jamal um, Charles, third-round draft Jamal pick. Jamal Charles. Just, they, <laughs> they stacked them up, and they, they picked right. And now they've got a coach that's going to take those players that have had a few years in the league and 
do big if things. If it wasn't for the Denver Broncos, this team would probably be the odds-on favorite for the AFC West, and they still might be. Because let's they face it, they haven't played yet. Both teams are three and zero, so um, that's going to be a cat fight, and I'm looking for that. I, I'm <laughs> I'm I'm jazzed for that. I like that. You know, uh, the problem is is you've got Peyton Manning versus Alex Smith, and I give that to Peyton Manning oh, every time. every every all, seven um, days a week. So, but you know, back to Seattle and in Houston. Um, I'm hoping that Houston is the team I think they are. Uh, I know J.J. Watt is the player I think he is. Oh, my is. gosh, that guy's a beast. I know Arian Foster wants to run the football. Everybody says you can't run against Seattle. I think you can in your own stadium. You just have to keep running it. Yeah, you, you can't just have to pound it at him. Um, you know, Sherman's good, but Andre Johnson is one of those. He's one of those monsters. He's a monster. And I mean, that, that rookie wide receiver they got in Houston, it's, it's too great that Sherman, either. you know, Sherman can match up against people, but he's not going to match up against, you know, Calvin Johnson, and he's not going to match up against Andre. Andre Johnson is a Leviathan. He's, I mean, he's got tentacles. Yeah. This guy will catch anything thrown at him. And if they can protect Matt Schaub, and I think they can, um, I, I just think Houston's going to pull this out. It's going to be one of those 21-20 games. Yeah, it's it's going to be a dog fight for sure, but I think this week on Sunday, Houston is going to put their foot on the gas pedal and they're not going to let off. I think that they're going to commit to the running game with uh Ben Tate and Arian Foster. They're in a timeshare for whatever reason, but hey, it's working. Those guys are both great. <laughs> yeah. Ben Tate would be the number 1 running back on any other team. Any other team. And and, and he'd be doing well. Andre Johnson's a little banged up, but He's banged up every game, and he still performs. I think they're going to keep Matt Schaub clean. Um, so I could see Houston winning this game in a close – it's going to be a close game, but I could see him winning this game because Seattle can't take the 12th man with them. They and can't. That, that's basically what it comes they're, down to. They're a good team, but they're not – They're. I mean – I think Russell people, Wilson needs to step up. People are building this, you know, like like Seattle is the odds-on favorite to just blow everybody out, and it's been impressive. It has, but there's been this stigma. We're trying to break the record and all this stuff, and they did it. They did it. You know, good job. You know, but they can't team. take that. They can't take that on the road with them, and so. they haven't been able to take it on the road. So and Russell Wilson needs to step up tremendous, tremendously in order for them to win this game. I just don't see it happen. I'm I'm going to give this one to Houston also. Wow, that's surprising. <laughs> um, so what's next? Indianapolis and Jacksonville. Indy travels to Jacksonville, and I think Andrew Luck is going to be the best quarterback in the NFL after he's been in the league a couple of years. He is unbelievable. Yeah, this, kid's got, this kid's got instincts. He brings <laughs> – He's at, he's way more athletic than you would think. <laughs> they go They go in and beat San Francisco at home. I mean, and handily, 27 to 7. I'm going to call it the Andrew Luck factor. <laughs> the kid, no matter where he's at or what he's doing, he it's always like, finds a way to pull like it out. He's like Tebow, but he can actually, he's an actual quarterback. He can throw the ball, yep. And they they said that Ahmad Bradshaw and Trent Richardson are going to be in a timeshare. Think about that. Ahmad Bradshaw and Trent Richardson it's, That's fucking horrifying. Well, it's the change of pace. I mean, it's the same thing that Ahmad Bradshaw was doing in in New York, right? I mean, he was he was he, a beast. He was in a timeshare with Brandon Jacobs, beast, right? Change of pace back, and then Bradshaw comes in and bangs it, bangs it. I mean, if they use the guy right, and I have a feeling Chuck Pagano knows how to use him. They did it last week. I mean, Trent Richardson was new to that offense, so he didn't. Bring a lot to the table, but another week of practice under him. I think they let him, they, they oh, let him score man. that touchdown. Look, look, you give this guy. <laughs> I mean, there's no doubt that the guy's got talent. But you first give carry this, with Indy, you is give a this touchdown. guy, <laughs> you give this guy one carry, and that's a walk in touchdown. What does that do, you know, to to that guy's self esteem? It, it I mean, shows that the team's committed to your success. They they want you to succeed, and that's yeah, huge for a player. Yeah, and, to know and, that. And so it's it's everything. It's everything. And and they're committed that, to Mod Bradshaw also. I mean, he's not just going to go on the back burner just because Trent Richardson. Chuck Pagano said this week, the running back situation this week is not going to change. Which why means why what? would you change it? It's working. Who cares? <laughs> I'm not. 
Look, Chuck Pagano doesn't care about egos. He doesn't he care. He wants W's. Exactly. So now you've got to you've got to prepare for a uh, an offense that's got Andrew Luck, Reggie Wayne, T. Y. Hilton, Trent Richardson, Fleener. I'm on Bradshaw, Fleener, the Fleener. tight end. I mean, and the offensive line's been playing well. So I I and, just think and it's Jackson. I think. I mean, I think Indianapolis is one of the more underrated teams in the NFL. I think they're going to go to the playoffs, and they're going to surprise some people. Well, they went to the playoffs last year, and they surprised some people. And I'm going to be curious just, how many people in Jacksonville now. are going to show up for this game. Is the stadium going to be half full? I mean, they were having problems before, right? You and know, I, I, I like Jacksonville just because I've always been a fan of the underdog. I love the underdog. And the players there have been doing it. They're – one more week. One more week, Jacksonville, and you Adam, get just Adam, as Adam Shine always says, America's team. <laughs> yeah, one one more week, Jacksonville, and you get Justin Blackman back. And this kid is dynamic, but you gotta go this week without him. And yeah, I'm well, sorry. You something at quarterback, I, I'm so. sorry. Indianapolis is just too good. Yeah, Roland. I mean, I, I I actually think Indianapolis might put more points on him at home than Seattle did. Yeah. And I don't think they're gonna pull in Andrew Luck. I think he's gonna play the whole game. And I think they're going to score 52 points. Yeah, Indy's going to win that one in a route. But, hey, Jacksonville, hang in there. We love you. We're rooting for you. But Go Jags, right? I love <laughs> just, your helmet. Just just too much offense for That actually uh, sounded really bad. I love yeah. your helmet. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Next game. Oh, my God. I can't wait to see this one. The Giants headed to Arrowhead. This is my favorite game of the week. It actually is. <laughs> because as a Dallas Cowboys fan – to watch the Giants struggle this bad, I love it. Because now they're not writing about... I looked on every website that I... CBS, Fox, ESPN, Fantasy Sports. It doesn't matter. I looked. I couldn't find a single article talking about Dallas, which is really good for me. Mm-hmm. Um, if they lose, then, then it's all over everything, right? Because they love the bash on the Cowboys. But, but they what win, we're talking about here, <laughs> right, and, and that's what I'm talking about. So what we're talking about here, though, is we're talking about the Giants coming into Kansas City 0-3, <laughs> and in my opinion, they don't stand a chance. I mean, <laughs> there's almost – it's almost like the Jaguars at this point. I mean, in this game, the Giants are better than Jaguars. They would probably beat them handily but they're not going to beat the chiefs the chiefs defense is too much it's too fast too aggressive they've got too much momentum i mean you've got the the giants are coming into this game with nothing i mean really nothing i'm not i you, you and i were talking earlier about there's always a chance that the giants could suddenly yeah. become they're one of those teams the new york giants they sneak into the playoffs at nine and seven and, and they could you know, suddenly become the new york giants but my but goodness the way is that... the way kansas city's playing right now even if they become the new york football giants i'm not sure they can win this game in arrowhead not with the momentum that this team's got not i mean the noise that's going to go on in arrowhead this weekend is going to be deafening Mm-hmm. This this city has been transformed. I mean, last last year they won two games. They had a murder suicide. The, the fans were wearing black. <laughs> you know, halfway through the season, it was ugly. It was as ugly as it gets in a football town. What What's amazing to me about the Chiefs is their player personnel hasn't really changed. Yeah, you bring in an Alex Smith. But you still got your Dwayne Bow, you still got your Jamal Charles. They've still got the they same changed, talent. They they changed two things. They they they've still got their what? their talent that they've always had, but now they've got a coach and Andy Reid. They changed. They brought two in things. Bob Sutton, and my you, goodness, is that defense in, you playing bring in, out of their skulls? You bring in one of the most talented coaches in the league. His winning record Beleaguered, is... Beleaguered, yes, yes, in Philadelphia. Beaten down, yes, in Philadelphia. But let's look at what... He's got a fresh start, Andy, young players, new team, Andy eager. Reed had to deal with a season in Philadelphia where his son died at training camp. Tragic. Yeah, I, I mean, and nobody really talked about that, and I think they didn't... You know, they didn't, nobody out of respect that for up. him. Out of respect for Andy Reid. 
But you, God, that's got to be hard to deal with. I mean, the guy needed time to deal with that, and, and he had to work through it. And he had to work through it in a hostile environment with a team that they said they were playing for him, but they didn't. No, and they and, had a and, ton of talent on that team in Philly. And they didn't last they didn't, year. They didn't play for him. And the maybe, dream team. You know what? <laughs> you know what? If Andy Reid's heart wasn't in it, as as much of a pro as I'm sure he is, been in the league a lot of years, always a quality coach. If his heart wasn't in it last year, I give him a pass. Yeah. His son died. Yeah. It's this isn't just a spurious event. His son died in training camp <laughs> and he didn't miss any time. Are you kidding me? Are you I would need like a year. I would need a year off. If I mean if Dude, your child you send me to the away. fucking moon. I mean, my <laughs> oldest son dies of a dr- drug overdose in a training camp that I'm supervising. I mean, I'm in charge of everything that goes on in this training camp. No drugs come into this thing. This is a professional football team. And my son dies of an overdose. It That's heavy, man. I mean, it's heavy. I can't believe that nobody gave Andy Reid a pass. I can't believe that nobody embraced this man. They didn't. They didn't embrace him. They broiled him. I tell you what, one hey, one man's trash trash is another man's treasure. And man, as a Kansas ran City this fan, guy out of town on a rail. But the, you know what? The second the Chiefs signed him, off to the city of Philadelphia for giving him a standing ovation yes, when he came back in. That was huge. That and was and then huge. he proceeded to whoop that ass. <laughs> and that's exactly, you know, what he should have done. He tipped his hat and then whooped that ass. Yep, time to go and, to work. Uh, but you know what? There's no allegiance to the New York football giants. None. Andy Reid hates the New York football giants. No love lost. He's absolutely got a right to hate the New York football giants. He's been against them for 14 years. They owned him. Won Super Bowls over his ass. He's going to destroy these guys. In in, in so much misery, <laughs> New York walks out of this 0-4. I don't see any way. I don't see any way around. You know, the Kansas City's defensive front has impressed me so much because yeah, they've got the same players. You got Tom Bali, Don Terry Poe in the middle nose tackle and Justin Houston. But a lot of the sacks that this team has had, and I believe they're leading the NFL in sacks. They are. I, I believe um, a lot of the sacks have been covered sacks because the chief secondary. Well, yeah, you guys have got you guys have got Eric Berry. Yeah, I mean you've got <laughs> Brandon Flowers, yeah, Brandon Flowers, it, Smith it, kid out of Miami from Miami on the other side. Dude, they're they're picking passes. They're plus nine in turnovers. The offense hasn't turned the ball over one Eric time. Eric Berry kept playing in the Dallas game, hurt. Yeah, yeah, he did, and 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 did damage. Uh, this team has just got way too much momentum coming into this game, and New York's got almost no reason. I mean, yeah, you you want to say, you know, God, New York just wants to win, but they're, they're going up against a, a, a three-headed monster here. I mean, I just don't – unless Kansas City shits the bed, I don't see that happening because it's only week four, and there's no way that Andy Reid's not going to get this team up up for this. This is still the New York Football Giants, and they could transform. They're, you know, I wish I could do that transformer thing. You know, yeah. yeah. I mean, they could do that. They could, they could transform. They've into got the, the talent into the New York Football Giants. <laughs> and I think you still beat them. The the only prayer that the Giants have in this game, in my opinion, is if they commit. To running the football and stick with it. If you if they can get to Alex Smith and sack him seven, eight, nine times, and trick him into making interceptions that he doesn't normally make, not going to happen. Or fumble the football. The Chiefs have spent way too much money on their offensive line. They're they're too good. I think Alex Smith is going to stay clean. But that's, that's what I'm talking about, though. That's that's how the Giants win this game. Is if he fumbles the, the a sack. Sack, fumble him on the two yard line and get a couple, you know, couple of easy scores. Somebody muffs a punt, uh, 
a couple of easy quick scores on and then and then the Giants would smell blood. Mm -hmm. If that happens, that's like lightning striking. I don't see that happening. I just don't see it happening. Yeah, but it the, could. I think I think the Giants running game is their only prayer, but I I, I don't you know think what? it's gonna happen. I'm gonna tell you something right now. You're right. The Giants should run the football. They're gonna run this David Wilson guy. And Justin Houston is going to punch one of those fucking footballs so far out of that guy's hand, and they're and they're going to bench him until next year. I mean, they if that happens, I feel so bad for David Wilson. Yeah, because the kid's dynamic. He's a good football player. He's a great but football player. But they're going to the, the, if they if they keep trying to pound it against that defense, somebody's going to punch a football out, and it's going to come out. Mm -hmm. It's going to come out. Yeah, the defense is just they're yeah. they're playing. Like they should have played the and last they, two years. If, finally. if it comes out, they're going to have Brandon Jacobs, you know, with a 1.2 yard run per attempt <laughs> average, and that's what they're going to get. Yeah, so we could both agree that, that Kansas City is going to win really, this game. Really enjoyed talking about that fucking game, though. <laughs> uh, All right. Pittsburgh and Minnesota in jolly old England. Tea and crumpets for yeah. everybody. Fish, fish, chips, cup of tea. <laughs> yeah. Bad food, worse weather. Oh, Mary fucking Poppins, man. London, from. Oh my God! Usual, I, huh? I don't. I don't know what to think in this game. Does Christian Ponder even play? Uh, well, Tom Brady kind of spilled the beans here a little bit and said that Matt Castle told him he was starting. But is Matt Castle that much of a different quarterback than Christian Ponder? I mean, to me, they're almost like the same guy. Well, which Matt Castle are we talking about? Are we talking about the Matt Castle that won 11 games when Tom Brady got hurt? And are we talking about the Matt Castle from 2010 in Kansas City that was a pro bowler, 27 touchdowns, 10 interceptions? Or are we talking about the Matt Castle that threw six touchdowns and 12 interceptions? Yeah, that won two games uh, last year in, in Kansas City and got – Ran out of town on a rail. <sighs> Poor guy. Um, I liked Matt Castle. I always did. Well, you know the thing that is is the book on Matt Castle was is that he hadn't started a he hadn't started a football game since he was in sophomore year in high school. <laughs> he didn't start any games. He went into college as a tight end. Yeah, he didn't start any <laughs> games at USC. He got picked up as a quarterback by the New England Patriots and. That system gave him 11 wins and allowed Bill Belichick to sell him for $11 million. Yep. And when he came to Kansas City his first year there, he played really well. Really well. But fire Todd Haley. You fire Scott Pioli. Matt Castle gets run out of town. Minnesota Vikings pick him up. So, you know, we really don't know who Matt Castle is. You know, um, well, I could tell you who Matt Castle is. Matt Castle is, um, he is who he wants to be as long as he doesn't play stupid. If he takes a page out of Alex Smith's book and relies heavy on the running game, throw four yards. Well, if you throw you, four yards let me tell of you pass, let me tell that's you, fine. Let me as tell long as you, you don't turn the ball over. Let me tell you what's happening in jolly old England. <laughs> it's Adrian Peterson and heavy fucking doses all day, all the time, and I'll bet you that that is the mandate sent down from Roger Goodell because this isn't just a football game. Let me tell you something. We went over to we went over to England. I'm going to drop that in there. We went over to England. We're not over there just, you know, for something to do. We're trying to expand, right? I mean, Roger Goodell is hoping that someday there will be a team in England. That'd be awesome. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Put a team anywhere. Let's put a team in Ireland. Fuck the, those guys are fucking tough, man. Yeah, they, they drink, throw poles. They and fucking shit. drink hard and shit. <laughs> I mean, they fucking run their heads into all kinds of weird objects. Um, but I guarantee you, <laughs> Roger Goodell said, "We need our let worldwide everybody yeah. see fucking Adrian Peterson." This guy is a fucking world star. He's going fucking nuts. Pittsburgh's not going to fucking stop him. He's going to have a fucking great game. They're going to still lose. <laughs> you think Pittsburgh pulls it out? I do. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. You know why? Because Minnesota can't stop the pass. 
I think I think Adrian Peterson is going to have a 180 yards on the ground, score three touchdowns, and Minnesota's going to lose, and it's going to be 38-35, and Schwiesem is going to kick the winning field goal. Uh, X Dallas Cowboy kicker that we fucking got rid of because he X Redskin too. Yeah, I mean you know he's going to kick the winning field goal. I I actually think Minnesota's going to win this game. From the simple fact that Ben Roethlisberger's offensive line is absolutely in shambles. They're offensive. They're offensive. The, they their are. offensive line is offensive, yes. Um, and I think Minnesota's pass rush is still really good. Um, their secondary is leaky. I'll give them that. But I think their pass rush is really good. Antonio Brown, yeah, he's a talented receiver. But I don't know if he's going to duplicate that performance again that he had last week. There's no reason why he can't against Minnesota. Well, if Ben Roethlisberger's laying on his back. Oh, you got Le'Veon Bell. You got it. You got Le'Veon Bell, but this will be his first NFL start, period. Uh, Yeah, maybe the rookie's worth the hype. He, I'm sure he is worth the hype, but this is four weeks, or three weeks, rather, that he hasn't played. And what do we always say? It's like Peyton Manning is a beast during the regular season. They sit him week 17. He goes into the playoffs and loses. I'm telling you, it's jolly old England. Roger Goodell's pulling the fucking strings. <laughs> I'm going to take Minnesota in this game. All right. I, I'm going to take the Vikings. You're taking the Pittsburgh I'm, I'm, Steelers, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm taking the Steelers. Okay. It's, it's, it's going to be a fucking nail-biter in London. <laughs> okay. Well, pip-pip cheerio, son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. All right. Next game is uh, the Arizona Cardinals heading to the Josh Freeman list. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Oh, good God Almighty! <laughs> and and what do you do? You do? agree with that decision, Bench and Freeman? I do. I actually do because the guy's been playing like shit. Okay, and for no reason. I don't know what is going on in the locker room. Of course, we can't. But this kid, for some reason, is not performing, and it's a contract year for him. He's at the end of his rookie contract. He's got every reason to be lightening up. And two years ago, I mean, this guy threw, you know, I think 24 touchdowns and 12 interceptions. Yeah, he played well. He was a pro bowl. He was on the top 100 list. Yeah. I know that. And and, and then they they brought in. I Mike mean, Glennon. Third no, round I, I don't pick. know who the coach was last year, but the team quit. On him two years ago. Uh, Shiano is who they not Shiano. They and they brought in Shiano, but they had this uh, uh God, he was a young black guy. And who I, I don't know who the, the coach was. Oh, they quit on him though. I don't remember. They quit on him. I mean, yeah. the, the team actually quit, and everybody in the world could see that the team had quit. He lost the locker room. Uh, I, I think Shiano's lost the locker room. God dang. I mean, and he's lost the locker room because he's too strict, right? Um, he's just a hard-nosed coach. I mean, he's he's kind of like, uh, you know, Hank Stram. Yeah, or uh, yeah. or uh, the jaw. The jur. The Bring jur. in the jur. I mean, he's the jaw, but he's not the jaw. He didn't have the winds behind him to be the jaw. So mm-hmm. they're not listening to him. And... You know, when when a defensive back is in the news because he goes in and talks to the coach, uh, let's get this fucking deal under control because you're a fucking defensive back, okay? Yeah, you're Darrell Rivas, <laughs> yeah. Rivas Island, whatever, but you know what? You're a defensive back. You don't even come into my office. You, you need to go talk to the defensive coordinator. You You don't come into my office and tell me you're unhappy with anything right i'm the head coach and i'm sure that that's how he handled it and that's probably not the right way to handle it it should have never gotten to that point but he's clearly lost the confidence of the team the whole captain voting thing and they thought for a team for it for it to even be leaked that the head coach might have you know cajoled the the voting for captainship so that Freeman didn't get voted as a captain. The players would know that, right? Hey, well, hey, I voted for that fucking guy. I mean, the the players are going to know, right? They talk amongst each well, other. Well, he was a captain. He took it away from him. Right, but it's a it's a player vote thing. 
And according to Shiano, he didn't get enough votes. They took the captain away from him. So did the players did the players really not vote this guy as a captain? He, I, he'd been a captain since his rookie year, after his rookie year. So two years he's been a captain. Now he's not. So either Freeman lost the team or Shiano, you know, hooked and jooked and told the team that he lost the team. Either way, this is an orchestrated uh, move to get Mike Glennon into the spotlight, which is, well, I think, what Shiano wanted. I, I think I think here is a logic behind that move. Um, you pull Freeman out of the starting lineup. You insert Mike Glennon. You've got 13 weeks to figure out what this kid is about. And then when you end up winning so you're, four so you're games. Saying, so you're saying you're on 3 you're giving up on the season. We're trying to see what we've got here. God, it almost seems like it. But, but if Mike Glennon doesn't perform well, you get a high draft pick, you take a quarterback, and then you move on from there. But I dislike the decision in benching Freeman. I think the kid's proven that he's got talent. He's when, got a great running game behind him. He's got when a he good proved, defense He, he hasn't him. done anything from week like seven last year to now. He's done nothing. So, I think that's coaching, though. I think I'm going to blame that on coaching because you could turn someone's mind towards a uh, towards winning and and i think that that freeman is in a bad way he feels like the whole world is against him and maybe you got to handle him with some kid gloves granted that's kind of bullshit if you're getting paid billions well, of dollars it's, a year it's certainly not shadow's style but at all but if you want to be successful you have to adjust and cater to your players you got to figure out how to make the team work well and i think shadow never really bought into this Freeman thing. And, it, you know, now see, like today I saw a thing where Carson Palmer said his, his agent was getting call after call. Norm, normally um, when a new, what normally when a, when a team hires a new head coach, the coach wants to bring in their guy, their court. They want to, they don't want to adopt or, or have the quarterback that's in place. They want to bring in their guy, much like Andy Reid did with Alex Smith. But, if you got a good guy in place, I think Josh Freeman is a. Good I'm not. I'm not certain that Greg Schiano thought he was a good guy. They were. They were but clearly his... quoting. You know, they were quoting Carson Palmer, call after call to his agent. Um, that came out today. You know, maybe Josh Freeman knew that. You know, maybe he knew that. So there's a lot of reasons why this kid's head is no, in the no, tank. You got, you got no fuck. Yeah, he's his head's in the tank. He has no support. He has no support, and I think. If he had the right support, the support of his coach saying, you know what, you're my guy. I'm going to stick with you. We're going to get this thing together. We're going to run the football. You've got good receivers. I believe in you. I don't think that happened. Well, be, I, be I think that. it was I think it was more like if you don't get your shit together, you're sitting on the bench. And you just don't do that. You don't do that, especially to a young player. Be that as it may, I think Seattle's got what he wanted. Um, maybe. Well, he's going to have a three-win team on his hands. How about that? Four-win no. team. Congratulations. He might. <laughs> and he might lose his job. And That's the other side of the coin. And, if, if you have a shitty season and, you and know ownership what? launches you, what did you gain? Now you're going to go back to being a coordinator, if not a position coach, all came, because you made a poor he decision. He came from Rutgers. I mean, that's, he he's just not a seasoned, polished guy. I mean, he'll go back. You to can the, you can pull that kind of shit on a college kid. He'll go back. You to can't the, pull that he'll shit. Go on back a to pro. the college ranks, and they'll pull in somebody like maybe they'll pull maybe they'll pull John Gruden. John Gruden loves Tampa Bay. He does, and he's a hell of a coach. So maybe they'll maybe they'll court John Gruden. There, you know, I mean, there's there's all kinds of musings around the league. Um, I just don't think Tampa Bay has anything in this game. Yeah, I think I think Arizona is going to walk into Florida and they're going to beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because Shiano has set it up to be that way. I almost feel like Tampa Bay is playing to lose this year for draft picks, and that's bullshit. If well, I was a Buccaneers fan right now, I'd be furious. Yeah, you know, this is a guy that last year you know had his team fucking bull rush. You know the the. Green Bay Packers on the last play of the game because that's what they did at Rutgers. You know, try to get the try to get the center to fumble the football. Well, this is the NFL. This is in college. Well, I, I don't think the guys picked up on that. And, and and there's been a run on college coaches lately. There there's been a run on them. Well, but. and and I think that I think that uh, Tampa Bay struck out with this one. 
I yeah, think this guy I, just has not a, you know, I mean, Harbaugh did good. Pete Carroll, obviously. But there are players, those guys are players, coaches. They, they, this they guy's find got, why this, guy, this guy's got a square jaw and he's rubbing everybody wrong. They and find I think he's ways, already lost a lot. These, these other guys find ways to make the players play for them. Shiano is he almost seems like the kind of coach that says play this way or else you don't play. And that doesn't work because these NFL players can find another job. They can they can go somewhere else and well, find a but job. They know that if they don't play, he'll get fired, they won't. They're under contract, they're under guarantees. But if what you're doing isn't working, then you need to change it. And Shiano doesn't understand that. Yeah, but he's an asshole. <laughs> You know, <laughs> okay, so that being said, the asshole factor taken in. Uh, I'm gonna take Arizona. Are you taking Arizona? I'm taking Arizona. Okay, we're both taking Arizona to, to win. Yeah, uh, beat next the game, asshole. next game me, is the New York Jets heading to Tennessee. Take on holy defense. You know, I'm, I'm just gonna tell you right now, uh, the Jets have come to the end of their fucking run here, and it, Tennessee's for real, their defense is for real. Their defense is for real. Jake Locker's shown signs. Jake Locker's better than Geno Smith. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I, I th- even on his on his feet, he scored two rushing touchdowns last last week. He he's a better quarterback than Geno Smith, only because he's got two more years on him, and he's got more weapons. He's got CJ two K. The Jets have got Bilal Powell. <laughs> the no. kid's playing out of his mind, though. Oh, yeah. He's playing out of his mind. It, it, but it's somebody else's mind. I mean, the, again, the Jets haven't played anybody. And, you know, like I told you last week, Tennessee's going to beat San Diego. They did. They're going to beat the Jets handily. I just, I don't, I, I think Chino Smith's going to make a bunch of mistakes. Yeah, I think uh, the Jets' defense will stand up a little bit. But I think CJ2K is going to break out a little bit. Not, he ain't going to run buck wild, but he's going to do his thing. And you got to watch out for Jake Locker now. And I just think Tennessee's going to win this. You wanna, it's going to be a 20-13. to 13 <laughs> You want to know why I think the Jets are going to win this game? Because Rex Ryan smiled in his press conference. That's why the Jets win this game. The Rex Ryan factor is back. Their defense is playing out of their minds. Geno <laughs> Smith is going to protect the ball. They're going to get the running game going. Jets win this game. All right, man. All right, we're going. <laughs> Jets win this game in Tennessee. J-E-T-S. Jets, Jets, Jets. 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 <laughs> All right, next game up is uh, Philadelphia heading to Denver. My goodness. Good luck, Philly. Yeah, I just... I... It's a, it almost goes without saying at this point, I, I think. Denver looks unstoppable. I, like, Peyton Manning is playing. He's having the best year here, of his career through three weeks. Normally, you would say trap game, let down. Peyton Manning doesn't let no, down. No, no, no. no Peyton no, no, Manning no, no, doesn't no. take a day off. Peyton Manning prepares, 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 and prepares. God, can you wait till this team gets Vaughn Miller back? How scary is that? It's it, it's stupid scary because <laughs> when, when, you know, when they put the legs on you, you know, and they, and they start stretching out and they're up by 14, 21 points, they've rendered you. That's that's Peyton Manning's perfect situation. Because he takes the, a quick lead on you and then he can just. And then the defense, just uh, watch the defense. Just, what are they going to do? They're not going to run. LaShawn McCoy, it, his, his. Most effectiveness is going to be out of the backfield, but they're going to be looking for that. They're not going to run the football. They're going to Lashawn McCoy might catch ten balls in this. They're going game. to prey on. They're going to prey on turnovers, and I think Michael Vick is full of them. I think Michael Vick is full of turnovers. Yeah, and I think with this defense, he's full of turnovers. I think Philadelphia's going to turn the ball over four or five times at least. Um, I man, I just see like a. Uh, like a forty-two to fourteen game. Yeah, it's, I, I just, it's Denver, Denver all day and all night in this yeah, one. For I just me. don't see. I, yeah, I I don't see a. I don't see the even, the, like last week. If you said, well, you know, Indianapolis going in, everybody said, you know, the 49ers are going to take you know 
all their aggression out on Indianapolis in Indianapolis one twenty seven to seven. I just don't see that. Said an Andrew Luck factor. But you've got <laughs> Peyton Manning won't let it happen. No, he's too he's good. Won't let it happen. He's a perennial Pro Bowler. He's a first ballot Hall of Famer. They, well, the guy and, and, and if the defense is fucking up, he'll go over there and fucking coach them up too. I mean, he mm-hmm. just will. It's not, yep. He's not gonna let it happen. He'll tell him what he's seeing. So Denver, easy all the way. Easy, easy. Uh, next game is the Washington Redskins traveling across the country to face to the black Oakland. Hole. Yep. Does Terrell Pryor play? I, well, and if he doesn't, what does that mean? Well, you know, the NFL is now saying, yeah, they want to look at whether or not Oakland even followed the, you know, concussion protocol. Uh, I don't think he plays. Just because now the NFL is looking into whether or not they should have pulled him earlier. They're certainly not going to let him go back in to complicate it. Um, so I think you got Matt Flynn. I think you got no protection for Matt Flynn. I think you got he doesn't have RG three with another week to get healthy. Um, I think you get Alfred Morris. I think you got Pierre Garcon. I think you got Hankerson. God, the defense is just deplorable, though. Yeah, I mean, just, if Matt Flynn's going to have success against any defense, can they really be that. I mean, you've got. What if they get McFadden going? <laughs> you know this. It, this game could turn into a track meet. It it really could. Um, I will say. I think if, this is the week McFadden gets hurt. I I will say that if Terrell it's week, Plyer it's plays, week four. I think McFadden gets hurt. He goes down. I think Matt Flynn shits the fucking bed, throws three interceptions, and I think Oakland's going to make Washington look like the team we all thought they were going to be, and. And they're not, but they're going to look like that for a week. I think Washington wins this game easy. If if Pryor plays, I'm going to give this game to Oakland. But if he does not play, I'm going to give it to Washington. I, I don't think it matters if he plays or not. Mm, I do. So hey, that that's that's my I'm split pick. Washington. It's going to come down to the quarterback. If Pryor plays, I got Oakland. If he does not, I got Washington. I got Washington all the way in this one. Okay, Washington all the way in this one. Uh, next game, your beloved Dallas Cowboys are headed to sunny San Diego to take on the Chargers. Tough, tough, you know, tough call. I, I don't know what to think of actually either team, really. I'm, well, not. I, I know what I got in Dallas. I, you know, Dallas Defensively, lost, they're, they they're lost nice. a tough game uh, in Kansas City. It was in Kansas City. Um, offense couldn't get much going. Uh, and now looking at the Kansas City defense, I know why. <laughs> um, and, you know, after this weekend, I think Kansas City is going to complete a sweep of the NFC East. <laughs> well, they and, still got the Redskins. Okay. I think they'll beat the Giants, but they still got the Redskins to beat. That's true. <laughs> um, but I think um, the defense has played very well. They played very well against the Rams last week. Mm-hmm. And uh, the offense is rolling now. I think Tony Romo's rolling. Um, I don't see San Diego giving up a, a ton of resistance to the kind of offense that Dallas is rolling with. And if you remember, I think, was it last year? Were they, were, were they playing San Diego when Tony Romo had that rib injury and he came back in the game and won it? I think they were playing San Diego. Very Brett Favre-like. And they, they won that game. Um, I I, I think Dallas is going to roll with this game. It, it, you know, it'll go back and forth for a little while, but I think Dallas will pull away. I think um, if Dallas wins this game, it's because they mimic what they did last week. They hand DeMarco Murray the ball. They've got to get their running game going. Hand the ball. Hand the ball. Yes. If this ball. kid carries the ball 25 to 30 times a game, you're gonna chew time off the clock. That You're gonna wear their Romo defense and out. Does Bryant all yeah. and Jason Witten all that much more? Lethal. Yes, it does. It does. And I don't know why the first two weeks Dallas didn't do that, but in week three against the Rams they did. They handed Demarco Murray the ball. He had a huge game, and it opened everything up because Dallas defense is gonna do what they're gonna do. They're a great defense. They're a top ten defense in this league at the end of the year, hands uh, down. Number two defense against the run. You know, number in San Diego can't run the ball to save their life. Yeah, Ryan Matthews and Ronnie Ronnie Brown is older than Monty Kiffin. I think. <laughs> yeah. um, I just. 
I think as I long think as Phil, I think Philip Rivers is going to fall back into his old way. I think I think Brandon Carr and, and Claiborne are going to pick him off. Yeah, I I think as long as I Dallas, think Terrence Newman's even going to come back and pick off a ball or something for is it if Dallas continues to run the ball and play smart football, they win this game in a rout. In a rout. And I'd love to see it because I hate the Chargers as a Chiefs fan. But if they don't, if they try to get fucking cute, then Phillip Rivers might pull off one of his fourth quarter yeah, bullshit. Yeah, so hang around. But I, I, I'm going to take Dallas in this game. I'm going to take Dallas too. But they better run the ball. That's all I'm saying. Um... Next game, New England traveling to Atlanta to take on the That's Falcons. That's a really interesting game. And um, I think people are giving New England way too much credit. Yeah, their defense has been not letting anybody score, but they've played the Bills, the Jets, and the Buccaneers. All losing and, teams. Yeah. Well, the Jets aren't, but they they don't have an offense. Um Two rookie quarterbacks and a quarterback that just got benched. It, you know, New England is the luckiest team in the league, <laughs> and I, I, there's got to be some kind of coercion with with the, the the whoever makes the schedule. Every year, it seems like New England has the easiest schedule, and they went to the Super Bowl and had the easiest schedule the next year. You know, win loss record against all their opponents. And maybe it's because they play in the AFC East and, and none of those teams are any good. But mm. um, The Dolphins might have something to say about that. Uh, this year they do, <laughs> and, and I'm sure they will. But they're they're lucky they're not 0-3. You know what I'm saying? And uh, they're, they're damn lucky they're not 0-3. And that sucks because they, you, you just give them time to start getting better, and that's – not good for the rest of the league because it's always Tom Brady and, and Belichick. But Atlanta just lost a game uh, to the Dolphins, which, you know, I, I predicted was going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen again this week. Uh, I think Atlanta's going to handle this business. I think uh, everybody's seen it coming. They're waiting for New England to lose, and they're going to lose. God, Atlanta is just destroyed by injuries right now and i hate that because <coughs> atlanta is primed to win this game they they really are but i think injuries are going to play a factor again in you know new england rolls into a team that could normally beat them but they're played with injuries and but you know what i'm ready for the magic to fucking end let's let's hit them with some reality you're not that good of a team it's time to stop being lucky <clears throat> Matty Ice, Julio Jones. Tony I don't give Gonzalez. a fuck what the yeah. defense is doing. It's time to face the fucking Piper. <laughs> and, you know, yeah. look, like, go back into the locker room with a fucking loss this time. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm taking a lap. You know, because of your aforementioned reasons, um, number 12 under center, I'm going to take New England. Yeah, All as right. long as you got Tom Brady and Belichick. They've always got a chance to win, and I think with Matty Ice has only lost like two games in the in, in the. Yeah, but who better Georgia to hand Dome. him another? Who better to hand him this third than than God, Tom I want Brady? To fuck Bill Belichick in the ass. I really do. <laughs> right, um, live TV. All right, so we're splitting again. I'm taking New England. You're taking Atlanta. Uh, last game uh, was this Monday. It's Monday Night Football. Uh, the three and O Dolphins. Headed to New Orleans to take on Drew Brees and the Saints. It's it's uh, you know knock knock who's there? <laughs> uh, Owen, Owen three, uh, three and O. Oh. It you're three and one. Yeah, Dolphins. I, you're three I, and one. I Magic's got, over. I've actually got New Orleans going to the Super Bowl for the Magic's NFL. over. You're 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 not going to beat the Saints at home. No, at home. No, on Monday night. Drew Brees, defense playing well. Everyone's Rob healthy. Ryan. Uh, it, it, you can't – you don't have enough – you don't have enough fairy dust. It's just not going to happen. Yeah, I think um, you put – You don't have you, enough – you don't have enough. If you put Tannen Hill on that stage, I think he's going to struggle. Because he's – They he's, don't have enough. He's going to be a good quarterback. He's going to be a good quarterback, but he's still really young. And you put him on the Monday night football stage – 
in New Orleans in the Superdome or Mercedes Dome or whatever it's called now. Uh, you got, they, you, there's they just don't have too enough. much. You, you, yeah. Ryan Tannehill's not enough. Lamar Miller's definitely not enough. Mike Wallace is not enough. Clay is not enough. It's just, if you match up position for position, Jimmy Graham, you know. Marquise Colston, Colston Lance Moore. Drew Brees. That Drew Brees. That slew of Drew running Brees. backs. <laughs> um, you know, Pierre Thomas, Sproles. It, 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 I, I think they're getting Jordan Cameron back this week too, aren't they? You just on, don't have enough. On I mean, the defensive side of the ball. So I knew. Uh, New Orleans defense. I think it's gonna be a blow up. I, I, I think. I think. I think Miami is is, is going to get fucking. They're going to get backpedaled, and when they do, they're not going to know what to do. They they don't have enough offense to play from behind. They're, they're no, not a team built to play from behind. No, and I just think Drew Brees is going to roll. I. This is a Monday night football game. I see thirty five seven written all over it. Yeah, it's it's I thirty five ten. I got New Orleans winning this game handily. Yes, yeah, in in a route because everybody in New Orleans is healthy. I think, like I said, I think they're getting Cameron Jordan back on the defensive side of the ball, and the guy's a dynamic pass rusher. So this was the worst defense in the league. I called in it too. League history. I called it. I called it. I said they're going to be way better this year. Well, and it, wouldn't take, of that, it wouldn't take much to be way better, <laughs> but they're they're actually really good. So yeah, um, and, and it doesn't matter who the players are. Um, it's scheme. They're yeah, and, and and you know Rob Ryan knows what he's doing, uh, and he's got players that are playing for him, and, and and the key here is Drew Brees and Sean Payton. Oh man, and them, what, them two back what together. What did Payton bring back to this team? You know, you, you fired my coach for a year. Okay. Yeah, but he came back. You know, he did P90X and CrossFit in and the they like, season. They, they and, didn't miss. And they didn't skip a beat. He got divorced and fucking started dating uh, this hard rock chick. Right? <laughs> Good Payton. for him. Good for that guy. He's a beast. Right? So, <laughs> and he's bringing this. And he's bring, And they were 0-6, right? 0-5, right, last year. Now they're 3-0. They're 4-0. Mm-hmm. They're going to be 4-0. Are, I think they Are they... Are they three and zero? I thought they were two and one. No, they're three and zero. They're three and zero. Uh, yeah, they're four and zero after this week. They're four and zero after this week. I've got it, them. As, them. As sure as I, as sure as I am that Kansas City's four and zero, the Saints are four and zero. Um, and you know, let's go. All right, who I is? Just, I, it's going to be a hoopla in in again in the National Football yeah. League. I'm going to enjoy it, but I think. Um, there's not so many upsets, but I think there's some blowouts coming. Yeah. Blowouts. Who do you think they're going to beat them Saints? Who who they? Yeah. Who they think going to beat them Saints? Well, I, that's I'm the Bengals. Sh- I'm I'm sure I'm sure the the yeah, who who day is the the Bengals. The who dat is yeah, who dat. Yeah, who dat. I think Miami thinks that they're going to win that game. Of course, who dat Miami? Yeah, who yeah. dat is my who dat nation? Is, who dat is not going to win this game? New Orleans is going to win this. It's game. going to be a route in the Superdome. All right, so we're split on a bunch of games again this week. I love it though. So you know, we'll we'll see what happens. We'll hey, see what you know, happens. Comment on us. You know, come back at us. Tell me what you think. Put your you know get, you know give me some grout. You know, tell yeah. me why. Tell me why you think I'm wrong. Yep, yep. I, I want to hear that too. Um, appreciate the support, and we'll see you guys uh, for week five. Look us up on Twitter. You know, hit me up. Give me a give me some comments. You know, let, let's banter back oh, yeah, and forth. Yeah, yeah. That's my, what the NFL is all about. My it's, Twitter link is down below in the description. So uh, we'll we'll talk know, to you guys. Pick a side and stand on. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But you better bring some fact. Don't just come with me as some fanboy shit. Yeah. Well, I, I really like the Eagles. Yeah, bullshit. <laughs> They're getting whooped this week. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, as always, it was a pleasure. From On behalf of myself and, and Jeff, we appreciate you tuning in. We'll see you next week. All right, rock out. Week. I love it, though.